Let us stand, please, for the procession of the family. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to him that hath no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever there has formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art our God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye, children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like the grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed in thine anger. And in thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We bring our years to an end as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, or even by reason of strength, fourscore years. Yet is there pride, but labor and sorrow. For it is soon gone, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger and thy wrath according to the fear that is due unto thee? So teach us, O Lord, to number our days, that we may get us a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us in the morning with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory upon their children. And let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. Man that is born of woman, is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. Our days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle. My days are like a shadow that declineth. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like vanity. His days are a shadow that passes the way. The voice of one saying, cry. And one said, what shall I cry? All flesh 
is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the breath of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power over the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days. What it is, let me know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days a hand's breadth, and my age is nothing before thee. Surely every man at his best estate is altogether vanity. Surely every man walketh in a vain shadow. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Blessed be the Lord who daily beareth our burden, even the God who is our salvation. God is unto us a God of deliverance, and unto Jehovah the Lord belongs the issue from death. Let me die in the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like this. Just want to praise you forever and ever, ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. And honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Just want to praise you forever. Ever, ever, for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong. You thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to praise you 
forever, ever and ever, for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, just want to praise you. Forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor To you, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for bless. You've been so good to me, Lord. You've been so good to me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing me, oh, oh. Amen, amen, and amen, amen. Scripture reminds us that though weeping endureth during the night, joy cometh in the morning. Turn to your neighbor and say good morning. Praise God, praise God. This is a celebration. Y'all act like y'all came here for a funeral. Give God some praise. Bless the Lord. Our opening hymn for this morning is Love Lifted Me. How many of us in here know that love lifted us? It wasn't your alarm clock that got you up this morning. It was love. It wasn't the alarm clock that allowed you to get in your car this morning. It was love. It wasn't the fact that you're sitting here this morning. It was love. You ought to be happy that God is still in the blessing business. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Love lifted me.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. I want to thank you all for joining in because if I started singing, the windows would have cracked. So I thank God for his blessing. Yes, yes, yes. I only know one key, and that's help me, Lord. So uh, I, I'm careful when I do anything. Amen. Amen. Is Reverend Lisa Weaver here? Reverend Lisa Weaver. Okay. She's on the program to do the scripture reading this morning, but... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, if that's all right with y'all. All right. All right. Our Old Testament scripture is the 27th Psalm, verses 1 to 4. Psalm 27, verses 1 to 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumble and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in his temple. Our New Testament scripture is found in the Gospel of John, 14th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him, and you have seen him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the living of his word. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Is uh, Reverend Marshall Mitchell here at this time? Amen. Amen. And I know he was on his way. All right. All right. He's not here yet. Do you want me to go ahead and do the, do the prayer? Conference? Yes. Yes. Let us pray. Father God, we come first to thank you, not just for what you do, but for who you are. You are our savior. You are our deliverer. You are our all in all. And we thank you that we can come and celebrate the life of Sister Wing. Oh God, we know that you don't make mistakes and you do all things well. So we thank you, oh God, that we're here celebrating her life and not her death. 
Because, God, we know that through it all, you have our schedules already on your calendar. This was not a day planned by the doctor. This was not a day planned by the funeral home. This was a day that you already planned. And that's why, oh God, when she heard your invitation, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We thank you, oh God, that your rest is that rest of the Sabbath that reminds us that when we can't handle it here anymore, when the doctors don't know what else to do, when the nurses have said, we've done it all, you said, uh-uh, give her back to me, I've just begun. We thank you, O oh God, that we are here today to celebrate her living, her coming. And we praise you, O oh God, because you just plucked another flower and planted in your garden in heaven. We thank you, O oh God. We pray for comfort and peace to this family, reminding them, O oh God, that she was only on loan to all of us, but she always belonged to you. Oh God, we come right now asking that as the tears come, you be the tissues that will dry their tears. And as the sorrow comes, you remind them that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And God, let them remember all of the good days, because we know no matter what, oh God, our good days will always outweigh our bad days. So we come, oh God, to give you praise, to give you honor, and you already have all of the glory. So we thank you, O oh God, that we can come together today, realizing that it is not over until you say it's over. Oh God, you just started a new chapter in the life of Sister Wing. It's called eternity, God. And we thank you that we'll all be able to read it and hear the epilogue. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, but I will make you master over many. Continue to lift them up, oh God, in these trying times. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we believe. In Jesus' name the people of God say amen, amen, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I love you. And turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. And turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor, give me $500. Y'all didn't turn on that one. That's all right. All right. God is still good. Amen. Amen. We will now have a selection by Sister Chanel Martin. Okay. Followed by that, we will have acknowledgments of condolences and resolutions by Sister. I don't know who's going to do that. Oh, Jackie Vaughn. She's here. Okay. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display, then see my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great 
great thou art then see God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden. to take away my sin. Then I see Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then a sea.
Good morning, everyone. I'd like to extend my condolences to the Wing family. And the family has asked me to read a few cards. Thinking of you and the loss of your mother. There is love that will live forever. And there are memories that will shine through the sorrow. May the wonderful memories of your mother's love be with you and comfort you at this time. With deepest sympathy, Valerie, Sissy, and Amber. Promises of God's comfort and hope. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, excuse me, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. John 11, 25, 26. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his holy son into the world so that we might live through him. 1 John 4, 9, NRSV. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 through 57. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. John 14, 27. To the Wing family, may God's hope-filled promises bring comfort to your heart. With heartfelt sympathy, may God bless you and comfort you. Love and prayers, Raymond and Gloria, message. Make my sake. Mercy. On the loss of your mother, in the holding on and letting go, in ways you learn to cope, in the tears and in the laughter, in the healing and the hope, in moments when you miss her and in happy moments too, you celebrate the lasting loves that keeps her close to you. With deeper sympathy, Gary and Stacy, keep the faith. God is with you. Your mom has reunited with your dad. May they enjoy a heavenly reunion. Love, mom. Mm. Mainline health, home care, and hospice. We wish to express our sympathy to you for your loss and to let you know that our thoughts are with you. It was an honor to have cared for your loved one. We hope that you find our bereavement packet to be helpful. In the weeks ahead, our bereavement staff will be in touch with you to check in and offer support. If you'd like to speak with someone sooner, there's a number here for you to contact. And there are several names that are listed here with fond memories. Amen. <laughs> Thinking of you with caring sympathy in your loss. Hey family, you know our love is here. Whatever you need, please do not hesitate to reach out. We love you. May God's promises and presence be your deepest comfort and your certain hope. Love and blessings, May, May Nell, Madison, and KK. Maul. <laughs> so shall we all, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Thessalonians 4, 17. I'm going to read a few more. Amen. Wishing you comfort in the loss of your mother. The heartache for what it has loved and lost. Gently wrap yourself in the warm memories of your mother. Let the love that held you close continue to bring you strength and comfort. With sympathy, blessings, and love, bow, varnish, vanish, Stan Wiggins, 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8. There are several many cards here, uh, but I'm going to read two more. Okay? Amen? Okay. <laughs> All right. I know it hurts and you miss her, but every day that you go out into the world and live as well as you can is a tribute to your mom and the happiness she wanted for you. Hope that thought brings comfort and peace to your heart in the days to come. With sympathy, Alan Covington. Thinking of you with caring sympathy in your loss. Dear family, May God's promises and presence be your deepest comfort and your certain hope. I pray the Lord will strengthen your heart during this time of bereavement. Love and blessings, Sister Barbara Williams from Shiloh. So shall we be ever be with the Lord. Thessalonians 4, 17. And lastly, 
Reflect, remember, rejoice. Dear Gary and family, hoping you feel peace in the promise of heaven and in the celebration of a life so well lived. With sincere condolences and love, peace, and blessings. Carlos and Juanita Copeland. Amen. Thank you. We now have a, a resolution to be read from the Shiloh Baptist Church family. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> resolution of love for our deaconess, Doris Vivian Wing, from the Shiloh Baptist Church. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1, King James Version. Whereas the providence of the Almighty has ended the life of our beloved, Deaconess Doris Vivian Wing. The officers and members of the Shiloh Baptist Church offer our sincere condolences to the beloved family and friends. He knows each one of his children and he knows how much we can bear. Whereas Sister Wing served on the Deaconess Board and became very important to our ministry. She was always eager to share her experience in spiritual counseling. She loved the Lord and reminded the board how important it is to be a servant of our Lord and Savior. Whereas the Wing family is very precious to our church. Reverend Wilbur Wing III, is one of our associate pastors. We have watched Reverend Wing grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we feel honored to be included in his spiritual journey. Mrs. Stacy Wing and their daughter Kennedy are faithful members of our church. Their gift of music is a significant tribute to our musical ministry. We have also been blessed with musical renditions from other members of their family. We thank God for this family, and we pray that you will remain strong and lean on God because the power of love is in the Lord. Therefore, be it resolved, the passing of our beloved sister in Christ is the will of God, and there is a human tie that has been broken. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of the Psalm of David who said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. I say, wait on the Lord. Psalm 27, 14, King James Version, respectfully submitted on this day, Tuesday, September 27th, 2022, on behalf of the officers and members of the Shiloh Baptist Church, 2040 Christian Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Shiloh Baptist Church family, the Reverend Edward Sparkman, Senior Pastor. Thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Deaconess Boyd. We'll now have a selection by Sister Stacy Wing, and following that, uh, Reverend Lisa Weaver of the Shiloh Baptist Church will read the obituary.
Soul. Come on, come on, somebody sing it. It is well, it is well with my hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, somebody say hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It is well with Mother Wing's soul. See, Mother Wing got her wings. Amen. We still got to work on our wings. Amen. Let's give God some praise for the life of Mother Doris Vivian Wing this Amen. Amen. See, I met Mother Wing sometime. She was somewhat older and somewhat quiet. But I know that she knows God. And she knew that this day was coming. Gary, I love you. I thank God for you. That's my brother, y'all. Um, two things, and I'm going to share her life story. When Mother Wing came to Shallow, the first Sunday that she came there, and we were still kind of like wearing suits and dressing up, and I walked in and I looked at this lady and she was so well dressed. And then I looked at myself and we had on the same suit. And I said to myself, I know I'm going to like this lady. And from that moment on, her and I had a special suit, pocketbook and shoe relationship. 
Um, <laughs> and from that day on, I always called her Mother Wing, and Gary knows I always say, how's Mother Wing doing? Um, Gary, I want to share this with you. I doing so much, I did not tell Amira that Mother Wing had passed. And yesterday in talking, I said I was going to her service, and Amira was really, really upset. But this is what she said. Oh, no. Not my fashion plate, lady. So, Mother Wing, I'm going to miss you. I, I, I thank you because I always used to look at you and say, when I got older, I wanted to make sure that I was always on point like you. Amen. And from this, once I read this and whatever else happens, please let us, Mother Wing, is, is celebrating in heaven, and we need to be celebrating here. It is no re need for us to be this silent because we know where she is. Amen. Amen. The life story of Doris V. Wing. Doris V. Wing was the eldest of seven children born to the late James E. Jackson and Vivian Jackson in Reading, Pennsylvania. Doris accepted Christ at an early age and was baptized at Zion Baptist Church in Reading, Pennsylvania. She was ed educated in the Reading public school system and graduated from Reading High School in 19. 51. After graduating from high school, Doris attended the Einstein Medical Center School of Nursing, where she graduated from in 1954. She was one of less than a handful of African American students in her graduating class. Doris began her professional nursing career at Einstein Medical Center, where she held various leadership positions in the maternal child health department. She was passionate about her career in nursing and constantly looking for ways to improve her skill set in this craft. In 1963, she obtained her Bachelor of Science in Nursing. She became an active member of Einstein Medical Center School of Nursing Alumni, in which she held various leadership positions. In 1974, she was honored as Alumnus of the Year. Doris transitioned from the hospital setting to the teaching arena when she became an instructor for the nurse aid program for the school district of Philadelphia. She obtained her vocational teaching certificate from Temple University in 1979. She taught for many years in the nurse aid program of University City High School, West Philadelphia High School, and Edward Bach AVT. While working as a teacher, Doris worked with Health Occupation Students of America, OHOSA. She would take her students on the annual conventions where they were exposed to a myriad of educational resources and opportunities to interact with other nursing students all over the country. Doris's impact on nursing was quite extensive. As a professional nurse, Doris was actively involved with improving equal opportunities and human rights for nurses and healthcare recipients, especially in relation to ethnic people of color. In recognition of her effectiveness in these areas, the Pennsylvania Nurses Association honored Doris 
during the 1984 convention with the Human Rights Award. Some of the activities for which she was honored included serving as a member of the Philadelphia Opportunities Industrial Center's Technology Advisory Committee, serving as PNA's Commission of Human Rights, and serving on the Governor's Commission on the Status of Women. Despite having a very busy career, Doris was a devoted wife and nurturing mother. She was joined in holy matrimony to Wilbert G. Wing, Jr. on June 25, 1955. From that 61-year union, two children were born, Beth Ann and Wilbert G. Wing III, who is also known as Gary. After becoming married, Doris became a member of the Mount Olivet Baptist Church. During her longtime membership, she served as Sunday school teacher, member of the Deaconess Ministry, volunteer for the Girl Scouts, and assisted in establishing a health ministry. She also sang on the women's choral. She would later become a member of the Shiloh Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Edward Sparkman. Doris enjoyed baking and was known for her delicious pound cakes. The cakes would the cakes often would not make it out of the church kitchen because people would start bagging pieces for their own enjoyment. Upon retiring from the school district, Doris remained very active. She began quilting and was a member of various quilting guilds. She also was a committed caregiver to her family and friends, whoever anyone, whenever anyone in her family became ill, she would travel to see them and use her nursing knowledge to make sure that their health care needs were being handled appropriately. She was a true servant of the Lord who used her talents to bless her family, the community, and her church. On September the 2nd, 2022, Doris went on to glory to join her loving husband, parents, and siblings, all who, all, who all preceded her in death after a long bout with Alzheimer's disease. She leads to cherish her memory, her daughter Bethann, Carl, of Coatesville, Pennsylvania, son Gary, Stacy, of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, grandchildren Sarah, James, Emily, Evan, Kennedy, and her little special angel Marley, and a host of other family and friends lovingly submitted the family. Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Weaver. The family has allotted time for remarks, um, and they're allotted time for two minutes. And if I can start out to Gary and Beth, um, it was when I was just a young 15-year-old uh, that my wife and I, now she wasn't my wife then, she became my wife later. Uh, Sister Wing was our Sunday school teacher at Mount Olivet Tabernacle Baptist Church. I was afraid of her then. <laughs> and I was still afraid of her when she joined Shiloh. But the one thing I realized is that we take for granted when, you know, these days come and we don't think about how when Moses said, teach us how to number our days, he wasn't talking about counting our days. He was talking about making our days count. Amen. 
And when you, when you think about that, when somebody lives to be 99 years old, let, let me put it this way because I calculated for us. When somebody lives 36,135 days, their days count. And they count because when you come to days like this, you don't come to talk about the past. You come to thank God the future, okay? God has decided to write a new chapter in the Sister Doris Wing story. And only she and God will be able to read it. And I can tell you right now, when she met God the other day, the first thing God said was, where are your pound cakes? Because I'm ready for them. So I just wanted to say it was a good time and you know she was with me and I just thank God that the few days that I have, I was able to share some with her. So thank you both. Amen. And everybody else, it's time for remarks. And um, they put two minutes, and they wanted me to explain what two minutes meant. <clears throat> you see those cords running underneath the, uh, the carpet there? Once you get to one minute and 59 seconds, it's going to vibrate. <laughs> when you get to two minutes, it's going to shock you. If you go over two minutes, we want you to see the funeral director before you leave. Amen? Amen. So now's the time to make remarks before we move into service. Anybody can come. Good morning, everyone. Um, I came up here with Marley. Marley's in the obituary. I'm um, her little special angel. Um, <laughs> but before she speaks, I'll say a few things about Aunt Doris. Um, of course, Uncle Gary has been in our lives since before we were even thought of, um, which means Aunt Doris was also naturally. And I remember being a little girl in Mount Olivet, being one of those people who was bagging up pound cake <laughs> in the kitchen because I also <laughs> wanted some as a little girl. Um, but Aunt Doris, she, you, everybody knew her for her wit, her fashion, um, her put togetherness, and her spunk, and her, um, you know, her spice. <laughs> and her spice, but she was sweet, spice, and everything nice. Um, and she did it all out of love. And I remember, you know, getting up to do announcements and things at church and she would always make sure nobody's chewing gum. I'm sorry, Aunt Doris, I have some in my mouth right now. <laughs> Stop that chewing gum, you know, and make sure that your dress was the right length and everything else. Um, but I remember um, maybe a week or so, maybe a few days before Aunt Doris had actually gone on to glory and I had the pleasure of being in her home and Aunt Stacy and Uncle Gary weren't there. Um, but I would find myself just going into her room, you know, throughout the day and throughout the night and just spending time with her and talking to her um, in those moments and, and having solitude. And that's not something I typically do um, because it just kind of, you know, I stay away from that. But for whatever reason, um, I guess God placed it upon my spirit and my heart to go and spend some time with her and to just, you know, see her at peace. And so we had the pleasure of celebrating her 89th birthday with her. Um, and we know that in our city, in our world, that we don't make it that far. And so that's a blessing. It truly is a blessing in itself. And Doris, we love you. We will continue to love you. And we're going to look for that pound cake recipe. All right. And Marley would like to say something. We bless Aunt Doris. We all really miss her. And she was my best friend, and I really miss her. But now she was Jesus, and I'm happy for her.
Hello, everyone. Gary, Stacy, Beth, and my family. You are my family. We are Mount Olivet. We will always be Mount Olivet. And digging this wing will always be digging this wing to me. And yeah, she was a little intimidating. <laughs> Spice, is that what it was used? Yes. But she said what she meant, and she meant what she said, and it was correct. I got to know her through a struggle at the church. You, you have a different vision of a person as a deaconess. I saw her that way. But in a struggle, we became friends. And we fought together. And you get to know how strong a person is and how their belief is. And she's a beautiful person. I was not intimidated after being with her for a while. She was smart. She taught me that I could eat salmon and coconut milk cooked on top of the stove when she was head of the health ministry. And yes, I too was always in the kitchen bagging up that pound cake <laughs> and going for those three bean soup, I think. She was a cook. She was a beautiful, I always admired her dressing. I admired her hair. It was always immaculate. And over time, she was a member of the AARP, 4037. We're all members of that. And we also travel together. And she's always carried this pocketbook. Oh my God, we said, how did she carry that pocketbook? She would be with it. So we were at the harbor. The AARP had a, a group trip to the harbor. And she's walking with us in this pocketbook. And I said, digging this wing, let me carry that for you. Well, did I make a mistake? <laughs> I don't know what she had in that pocketbook. But I could only carry it for about 15 minutes. I was like, I'm sorry, you got to get this, take this pocketbook back. But I am so happy that God put her and me together. And I was able to see both sides of a person that's beautiful. And I enjoyed her. And I'm not I'm sorry to say, I loved her. I really did. I love Gary. I remember you as a little kid climbing under the, I'm not that old, but I remember you climbing under <laughs> the seats. I remember you being in the trustee room with your dad. He was a treasure. And I remember when you and I, you were chairman of the deacon board and I was chairman of the trustee board. We worked together well. I love this guy. He's a beautiful guy. We knew as a kid that he was spiritual. My father, Deacon Callaway, used to always say, Gary is going to be a minister. And Gary, you are a beautiful, wonderful person. Thanks to your mother. Thanks to your father. And you are beautiful thanks to Stacy, your daughter, and the family. We are family, the Callaways, the Butts, the Deans. We're Mount Olive, we will always be. It's just so sad that we have to come together at a time like this. But it's always good to be in the house of God and also good to see the people that you love. You don't get to see that often. And may her soul rest forever in this kingdom. To, as they say, to be absent from the flesh is to be present with the God. Enjoy your day. Bless you. I think that my mom passed along her heavy bags to her daughter and her granddaughter. <laughs> um, but one of the memories that I have of her that um, I think it goes against sort of that intimidating spicy side that we all knew they used to come out to the country and watch my siblings and I when uh, my parents needed them to. And we used to always beg to be able to come back to the city with them and spend the night. And so we would, they would take us back to the city and we got to have all the things there that our parents wouldn't let us have. So we got to eat the cereal that had all the sugar in it. And I had Scrabble for the first time there. And, and so, if I'm privileged enough to be a grandmother, I hope I get to spoil my grandkids like she did with the things we weren't allowed to have. <laughs> um, so we love her. She was a strong woman. And she raised strong women. And um, I just thank her for that.
yes, my mom raised strong women, but I need a piece of paper. <laughs> um, I would like to say a few things about my mother. She loved me so that I would feel safe. She loved me that I would learn to think independently. She loved me so that I could respond to the call of salvation. My mom also passed on to me the nursing gene, um, and I passed that nursing gene on to Emily. So the tradition of caring for people um, continues. And I just want to thank my mom for loving my brother and myself so that we could be loving people. Thank you. Good morning, family and friends. So Jerry and Stacy, my name is Sophie. I don't know if you guys remember me, but I met you at um, Joe DeReef's dinner. So it's a small world, just wanted to say hello. But um, my name, again, my name is Sophia, and I actually had the opportunity to be educated by Mrs. Wing at the Edward Bach High School, um, class of 1999. Um, so I'm honored to stand here today. My fond memory, I, let's say I goofed off really, really bad in her class. <laughs> I almost didn't make it out of high school. Um, when I signed up to go to Bach, I initially signed up for the cosmetology shop, which filled, out, which filled up pretty quickly. So I ended up in the nursing assistant um, class by default. But God knew what he was doing. I stand before you now as a master's prepared registered nurse. To God be the glory. And I'm also an educator. And so I contribute that to people that God has placed in my life. Um, Mrs. Wing, because of her, I fiercely advocate as well for African American um, students to push forward in the nursing field. Um, I can make a mean mitre corner in a bit because of her. <laughs> Um, I remember in high school, she was going over with us on how to make a bed, and I thought I did a good job, and she came right behind me, and she pulled all the linens up and made me do it again. Um, when I make my bed at home, I make sure that the pillowcase, the, the opening to the pillowcase is not facing the door. So just little things like that that people instill in your life as a child that carries on into adulthood. So I say to her family today, may her legacy of love, family, and selflessness live um, within you. May you also reach back and push our young African-American students. They, they need it, whatever they want to do. If it's not nursing, whatever they want to do. May you also have that fierce energy to allow, to push them to be all that they can be. So thank you for sharing your mind with us. Praise God. So I'm not as outspoken as my counterpart here, Sophia. But we went to, um, like she said, we went to our box where we were taught under Mrs. Wing. And at the time we were, we goofed off something horrible. I didn't have the same story. I was passing, but I love to <laughs> goof around. So when we got, I remember her telling us like, this is not it, like nursing assistant isn't it. You guys can go on to college. And from her telling me that, and from another teacher telling me, you play a lot, but you're smart, go on to college. When I graduated, I went on, I got my nursing assistant, and I was like, yeah, no, this is not what I want to do. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Ms. Wing said we were better than this. So I went on, I got my associate, went on to my bachelor's, and now I'm in school, three more semesters, I mean, two, three more classes, and I will be a master's severe nurse also. And I, like Sophia, contributed to Mrs. Wing and those who were placed in our lives to push us and let us know that as brown people, we can achieve more than just what the world say mm -hmm. we're supposed to be. Because I came from the projects and yeah, I had a baby as a teenager. I wasn't supposed, I'm not supposed to be in the position I'm in. But people as Mrs. Wing allowed me to know that I can do more than what the world say we can do. So I just praise God. It was, it was, it was shocking when I walked in the house because Kennedy, is best friends with my son. When I walked in the house and seen Ms. Wing, I'm like, what is she doing here? Cause like, <laughs> like this gentleman, I'm like, 
<laughs> oh Lord, what is this now? Because she like she was stern and she wanted nothing but the best for us. And as you said, we were goofball. So she will let us know like this is not it. So I'm just blessed to have known her. And I pray for you guys and pray for your strength as the days go forward. Minister Elaine Garvin, and I am a neighbor of Gary and his lovely wife and lovely daughter. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. My name is Minister Elaine Garvin, and I am a neighbor of Gary and his lovely wife and daughter. Gary, I just want you guys to know that you are blessed. The Bible says, honor, honor thy father and thy mother, and thy days will be longer on this earth. That really means that you are blessed. You know, we never know how our neighbors are watching us and how our neighbors really feel about us. But it's good to know that you're letting your light shine before people. You know, when my neighbor Pat told me that, you know, Gary's taking care of his mother. He, you know, that's why he's there, him and his wife and daughter. You know, I, that made me have the utmost respect for you guys as a neighbor. And he didn't know that every time I saw him, either out there working or on lawns or his wife, that's the first thing that came in my mind. You know, the honor. I had a lot of honor, and I have a lot of honor in my heart for you guys because it takes a special person to do what he did. Because a lot of people can't deal with sickness. They put their loved ones in nursing homes. Because it doesn't mean they're bad people, but they just don't have it. But I praise God that God gave you guys the strength and the wherewithal to do it. You know, I didn't know your mother personally. But, you know, it really touched my heart. And I really love to see when I read an obituary Doris accepted Christ. Education is good and all, but the main thing is she accepted Christ. So you don't have to wonder, you don't have to worry where she went. You know, did she ask God to save her in her last breath? You know how people think, but she let her light shine, and I can see that she was a legacy to her family and Christ. Good morning. Um, I am Beth's husband, and um, I just wanted to tell Beth and Gary how much um, I appreciated Doris. Um, before we were married, we, we had our struggles, Doris and I, but um, we had utmost respect for each other. And, and I, I was blessed to have a, a couple of years to to be her wheel man, and um, when she lived with us for a couple of years, and uh, the things that you've heard, the impact that she's had on other people, we know is genuine. Beth and Gary are both beautiful adults, and, and I'm honored to be to have been married to Beth for 44 plus years, and um, I just thank the Lord for Doris, and um, I thank you for the way he guided her to raise an independent daughter, son also, but daughter. And uh, my wife has been instrumental in helping me just to grow and have a wider vision about life in general. So I praise God for that. Good morning. I'm a neighbor of Gary's. Been around there for over 50 years, across the street from his mom and dad. 
Gary's mom and dad, I used to see his mom come in the house. I said, this baby's coming in the house real late. And I had to watch her come in the house. I said, I'll make sure she get in the house. She's working. She was working, working, working. And his dad, he'd be out there shoveling the snow. I said, oh, let me go help this man. And then Gary started coming in, shoveling for them. And also, Gary called me one day and said, I'm a registered nurse. And he said, he needs somebody to take care of his mom. So along with myself and Angie and Virginia, we had the pleasure of taking care of his mom for him. So Gary and the family could have a weekend to themselves, had some days off and everything. But the most important thing, if you can't stand, I want everybody to stand up and praise Gary because I never seen a man do anything that he did for his mother. He took care of his mother. Woo! Praise the Lord. A special person. A very special person to do that. I thank you. Thank you. And I would do anything for Gary that he needs. Because I said, Stacy, can you do it? Stacy said, I can't pick her up. I said, Gary picks her up. He was faithfully. Gary would come home from work, tired, drained, but he had to take care of his mother. Stacy would fix the food for her for the, the weeks to come, the days that they were gone, and we would feed her, along with the other family coming along helping us and letting the dogs out. But Gary, God made a special person of you, and I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for taking care of your mother, because there's no one else like you. <laughs> Gary and Stacy, I just want to give my condolences. Um, I'm glad I had the opportunity um, to take care of your mom. I wish it could have been longer, but she was a really sweet, inspiring woman. I love brushing her hair, too. And she was really nice. I remember when I first came in, she didn't want to eat at first. And, you know, I said to her, I said, Miss Doris, you got to eat. You got to stay with us a little longer. And then after a while, she smiled at me. She started to eat, and I enjoyed my time with her. And I just thank God for the opportunity I had to spend with her. And I love y'all, and my prayers are with you guys. Hi, everybody. I'm a little shy. But Mr. Gary and Mrs. Stacy, it's an honor to be here. I'm going to miss your mom. I was her aide. It was an honor taking care of her. Just want to give you my sympathy. I'm here for you if you need me. Love you. Miss you. I'm always here. Love you guys. And you were a great son to your mother. Um, the best son I ever known. You did everything. Love you. We're going to miss you. Love y'all. To God be the glory. To God be the praise. Let's everybody give God some praise. As it was said, it's a small world. Now, Gary and Stacy can tell me the exact time, but my neighbor and I went up to Zion Church in Reading. In Reading, this is the icing on the cake. And uh, a cousin of mine was being ordained as a deacon. And we got there a little late and my cousin said, uh, my cousin's sister said, the kitchen is closed. But while we're standing there, this young man come running through the door and went downstairs. I said, but they said the kitchen is closed. He must know something that we don't know. Well, we go upstairs for the service, and in the audience sat Stacy and Doris. And I said to my neighbor, what are they doing here? This is my cousin's church, Zion Baptist in Reading, another part of my family. So we and then up in the choir stand was sitting Deacon Wing with the deacons and my cousin who was being ordained. And I just couldn't get it. So when service was over, I went over and I said, What are you all doing up here? And Doris said, This is my church. I'm from Reading. I said, These are my cousins that live in Reading. 
we don't come up that often, but I had never ran into them. And the young man who had ran downstairs to the kitchen was none other than Gary. He knew how to get the food. So it was, a, <laughs> it was a wonderful service. And then I found out that my cousins had come to Stacy and Gary's wedding in Philadelphia, which I only went to the service, but they had the whole invitation because <laughs> Doris was a classmate of Stella and L.G. Williams. So now Doris is having class reunion in heaven with my cousins from Reading. God bless you. That was my girlfriend, y'all. Listen, um, my sister is Stacy. For those of you who do not know, um, she waved her hand like, "Hey," um, but. You know, you talk about honoring, you know, you honor your mother and your father. And Stacy, my sister, you know, my girlfriend wasn't her mother, but she was her mother-in-law. You, you would never hear her say mother-in-law, though. She's like, this is mom. And so um, I just commend, of course, Gary and Stacy, but my sister, because not too many people will take on what she took on. And she did it with love, y'all. Um, not complaining. She loved on mom Doris she loves on her as if she was our own mother and I always say God bless y'all you know this this is a work to do and great is your reward in heaven and so God bless you to the entire family but I absolutely have to um just say Stacy and Gary and, and little Kennedy you know she was hanging right in there with her parents too but just caring for for my girlfriend and, and I would go in there and just sing with her and and her face would light up, and Stacey would say, well, she ain't say anything all day. And as soon as you get here, here she go talking. And it, it was just a way, you know, we just had a way with one another. And I have so many memories, um, pictures and videos, and just her and I just having conversations. And so I am going to miss my girlfriend. Um, it's not going to be the same. It's not the same walking into 5801 Woodbine. But what is the same is the love that's overflowing in that home from Gary and Stacy and Kennedy. So God bless you all. And um, we're going to go in with this celebration, y'all. So let's give the Lord some praise for the life and legacy of Mom Doris. Amen, amen. We're going to now have a selection from Brother Charles James. And after that, uh, the Reverend Wilbur G. Wing III will give the eulogy. And I, I did see Pastor Mitchell come in. So Pastor Mitchell, I'll ask if you can do the benediction. We're ready for, thank you, sir. I shall wear a crown I shall wear a crown I'll When it's all over When it's all over, I shall wear a crown. I, I shall wear a crown. I, when it's over. Oh, yes, when it's all over, I shall see his face. 
I shall see his face. Hey, when it's all over, oh, thank you, Lord. When it's all over, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Oh, yes, I will. I'm going to Put on my robe and tell the story how I made it, how I made it, how she made it. She's going to put on her robe. She's going to tell the story that she done made it over. Oh, yes, she has. Oh, yes, she has. She's put on, on, she's put on her robe, and she's telling the story how she made it over. Oh, thank you, God. No more sorrow. Oh, no more pain. No more suffering. No more dying, no more crying. She done put on a robe, she put on a robe, put on her robe. And she's telling the story, how she done made it over. Hallelujah. Soon as I get home, soon as I get home. Soon as I get home, soon as I get home. Mom has a robe on right now. Amen. Amen, amen. First, giving honor to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to my pastor, the one and only Edward Sparkman, to my sister, Reverend Weaver, to my brother from another mother, Pastor Mitchell, and to my wonderful family, and to my blessed wife and daughter, I bid you good morning. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for a life well lived. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that mom has made this job really easy because she walked and lived her eulogy each and every day. Dear Lord, I thank you, Lord, that she knew you for the pardons of her sins, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, 
for the legacy that she has left behind. So now, Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you will empty this, your vessel, out of everything that is unlike you, Lord, and fill him with your Holy Spirit. That something might be said, Lord, to first give your name glory. That something might be said, Lord, to bless this, your people, that they may see and hear the wonderful work that you did in the life of Doris V. Wayne. Lord, I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First, I just want to thank everyone who, who came out. I want to thank everyone that shared those, those kind words about my mother. And I just want to, to thank you for just being here with my family at this time as we, as we try to ride out the wave of life. Amen. I promise you I won't be before you long. I just want to say a few things and I want to get out of the way because I know that we have a, a long day before us. But when I was thinking about and praying about what I was going to, to say about my mother, the Holy Spirit put into my mind the thought of the heart of a lion. And I pondered that for a few days and it, and it seemed first a little funny, but then it seemed to be the, the perfect package for my mom's story. The heart of a lion. See, the first thing that, that, that came to mind when I, when I thought about the, the characteristics of a lion was its loud roar. <laughs> and my mom was born during a time when our people were fighting for their civil rights. She became a nurse during a time when, when nurses were not really uh, respected as professional healthcare workers. In fact, mom came up during a time when, when, women, when women were looked at as being those uh, who should just look pretty and sit down and, and shut up and, and produce babies for their husbands. But you see, and as you've heard, and as many have seen, and my mom simply was just not wired that way. Uh, she was of the mindset that, that closed mouths don't get fed. Uh, so when she went on a quest, or, or like lions do, when she, she went on a hunt, if you will, to seek after a better way for herself and, and others, mom chose the path or, or trail to, to pursue excellence in anything that she did. And I remember, and I don't know if she did this to you, Beth, but I remember mom always pounding this, this saying into my head that mediocrity just simply will not be tolerated. She would always uh, say that as a, a black woman that she had uh, to, to excel in everything that she did. She had to be excellent in everything that she did in order for those to look at her as just normal. She had to be overqualified for positions to be looked upon as just being average. And that's why she, she always pushed us hard and, and she tried to do her very, uh, to, for us to try to do our very best at, at anything that we put our minds to. Like Paul told Timothy, to show, to study, to show thyself approved. If you want good results, then, then you have to be willing to put the work in, to put the effort in. And, and, and so, so part of mom's roar was uh, to let people know that she meant business and she was on a quest or she was on a hunt to make this world a better place. See, my mom's roar 
was also a means to be an advocate for her family and for her friends. Uh, before the saying got famous, uh, mom was already pumping us up with the idea of FOE, family over everything. Let something happen to one of us and my mom would be right there ready for anything. I, I will always remember getting into my first fist fight because of my mom. Amen. When we used to live in West Oak Lane, we, we, had, we lived in a, a twin house and we shared front lawns uh, with our neighbors. And when I was young, we used to play football on our lawns. And one day, the, the bully of the, the neighborhood came and he took my ball from me and said that I couldn't play on my own lawn. So, of course, I run into the house and I'm telling my mom, Mom, you know, this is what happened. He took my ball and he said, I can't, you know, I can't play. And she said, what? So you mean to tell me you came in here he took, and he took your ball and he's going to play football on your lawn? That's not going to happen. You go back out there, you take your ball back, and you play football. And I'm like, well, mom, mom, I don't know, because if I do that, then, you know, he might hit me. She said, well, let me tell you something. Either you go out there and fight him if it's necessary, or you fight me. So which one you want to do? So when I looked at my mom, and I looked out the window at this guy, I was like, I think mom might hit a little bit harder than he does. So I went out there and I took my ball back and we got into a fight. And then after that fight, the guy ended up being my friend. Unfortunately, that's not the way things go in this world today. That could have ended in gunfire or whatever, but, but my mom said what she meant and she meant what she said. If my mom's, if her mom or her siblings or a friend of the family was sick or in trouble, then, then she would hop in her car and she would drive, whether it was a few blocks away or a hundred miles away, to go see about her people. If they were in the hospital, then mom would drive, would, uh, would, would, would uh, go and talk to the staff and that staff better have all of the right answers. That staff better knew what the care plan was supposed to be and they better have been doing the care plan as it was scripted or she was going to let them know about it and not in a quiet manner. Mom also showed us the trail of, of, of being in poverty and not having but so much. She would tell us about having to, to wear hand-me-downs and she would talk about putting pieces of cardboard in the soles of her shoes when they would wear out because they couldn't afford to get new ones. And how they sometimes might have to, to worry about what they were going to eat and how my Nana some kind of way divided up the food so that it made something out of nothing. But, but see, mom only showed us the trail. See, she only talked about that trail um, because we always had a roof over our head and we always had clean clothes to put on our back and we always didn't have to worry about what we were going to be eating. And that's because mom said, no, you know what? I took that trail for you and I did the things in my life for you so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to sit there and worry about, am I going to eat something? You don't have to sit there and worry about, am I going to be able to make it? And because of the sacrifices that my mom made, my sister can be the person that she is, and I can be the person that I am, and my daughter can grow up to be the person that she's going to be because she laid a foundation that was all about business, and it was all about sacrifice. The other trait about a lion that mom exhibited was tenacity. When she set her mind to do something, she was not going to let anything or anybody stop her from obtaining her goal. See, many people of our, our era, many people of her era exhibited that same tenacity. 
That's how King and Malcolm were able to accomplish all the things that they did. That's how our ancestors were able to overcome slavery and, and go on to build great institutions. That's how Jesus was able to deal with the Pharisees and bear our sins on the cross and complete the task by, by going to Calvary and dying for your sins and mine. But see, this generation that we have today, they forgot about tenacity. Let the wind blow in a different direction and they're ready to give up on life. Let their plans not go the way that they are supposed to and they're ready to pick up a gun and shoot up the world. But see, my mom wasn't from that pride of lions. See, she came from a, a pride of lions that, that said, come a hell water, come hell or high water, I am going to accomplish that, what I set out to do. No matter what gets in my way, I'm going to accomplish that goal. Son, daughter, this is how you persevere. This is how you are going to go around an obstacle or go through an obstacle, or go over an obstacle. But no matter what, no matter what comes your way, you have to be tenacious because closed mouths don't get fed. Speak up for yourself. Every position that I ever had or came into was because I wasn't afraid to open up my mouth and advocate for myself because my mom advocated for me and she made sure that I knew how to advocate for myself. That's because mom, the queen lioness, demonstrated that skill set for me. When I looked at her resume, when I was trying to find out all of the, the different things that she accomplished, all of the various positions uh, that she had, they all looked like they were things that were moving her up a ladder with more and more responsibility. But I don't really believe that she was doing these things to gain notoriety or fame. I believe that she was doing this to show others the way for the people that were going to come behind her that this is how you do it. For the women of color or men of color to you can achieve these things. They already said that they did because my mom showed them how to do it. Don't, any, don't let anybody put you down. Hold on, work hard and apply yourselves and you too can achieve all the things through Christ that strengthens you. Christ, oh yes, Christ was always a part of this process. See, church in our lives was, was something that was essential. It was, it was something that, that was mandatory. We had to go to Sunday school and Bible study and, and we had to, to, she showed us not by just telling us what to do, but she showed us by doing it with us, teaching us how to pray so that we would have access to the ultimate power source. If I had an issue or a difficulty with anything, she would ask me, Gary, did you, did you pray about it first? Uh, well, if you didn't pray about it, then you need to. And that was the power behind the roar. That was how she was able to accomplish every things she did through the power of prayer. But eventually, beloved, her, her roar, her roar began to get weaker and, and sickness started wearing mom down. But even in that weakened state, remnants of that roar were still there. She would still be able to tell you to get out of here at some times, that, that she could do certain things on herself by herself, but, but disease would eventually quiet that once mighty roar. And I know some of this may, may sound like a uh, part of a, of a Disney story, but let me tell you how my mom exited this world. As you know, we were taking care of my mom and she had just turned 89 on her 23rd birthday, which was August 23rd. And at that time she was up and she was awake and she was able to, to eat a birthday cake and she was able to take pictures with people. And when we were singing to her, you could tell that she knew what was going on. But, but quickly after that, she started sleeping more. 
In the hospice, people were saying, hey, it could be hours or it, or it could be days. So I started staying home and just making sure that I was there with my mom even more than I had been. And it was on a Thursday that Kennedy and Stacy both were back at school. And so I had time with my mom and my mom had been sleeping. But when I went in to, to check on her and uh, to change her, first I wasn't going to disturb her, but then she just popped open her eyes. So I changed her and made sure that she was okay and she still had her eyes open. So then I pulled up a chair and I, and I sat down with my mom and I held her hand and she just stared right into my eyes. And I sang to her and I prayed with her and we just had our time together and even though she couldn't talk anymore. I got this from her eyes. She said, son, thank you for everything that you did. You followed the trail that I showed you about being a caregiver. When I needed you, you came to see about me and you tended for my every need. I even noticed how you were even able to make the little tapered corners on the bed like I used to show you when you were a little kid. son." I show you that you followed the pathways that I showed you before. You got a beautiful wife, you got a beautiful daughter, and you're doing what you can to provide for them. Thank you very much. Son, I saw that you go to see about your family. You believe that family comes before everything. And so when your family's in trouble, no matter where it is, near or far, I watch you go to see about your family just like mommy did. Son. I see the trail that you followed when I showed you that you needed to be educated, when I showed you that you needed to open your mouth if you wanted something, that you couldn't just sit still and think that things were going to come your way, that sometimes you had to kick the doors in. Son, I saw those things, and I thank you for following the trail. Son, I hear your mouth. I know you got a mighty roar. You got that from your mommy and your daddy. Thank you for following the trail that I showed you way back when. I looked into those eyes for about a good hour, and she says, son, thank you for following the trail when I showed you the way to Christ Jesus. You picked up the trail, you picked up your cross, and you kept on walking just like mommy and daddy did. Thank you, son, for following that trail. I kept looking in her eyes. And even though she couldn't talk anymore, she says, son, I'm on another trail right now. Son, I'm on a trail that even though you see where it's going, you can't go with me right now because I'm on a trail to meet my Jesus. I'm on a trail to meet my mommy and daddy. I'm on a trail to meet my sister Joan. I'm on a trail to meet my sister Carol. I'm on a trail to meet my brother Bobby, to meet my brother Ronald, to meet my brother David. I'm on a trail to go back and be with everybody in the pride, the Jackson pride family that's going on before me. Son, you can see the way, but it ain't time for you to go there yet. Follow the rest of the trails that I showed you how to follow. Be a good husband to your wife. Be a good daddy to your daughter. Be a good brother to your sister. Be a good caregiver for your family. Be there when they need you to be. And when you do all those things, I'll be sitting here waiting for you in heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a verse of when we all get to heaven. 
And then I want to ask if Pastor Mitchell will come and give us the, the benediction. But that song, When We All Get to Heaven, is so important because what it says to us is that they can't start the party till we all get there. So let us stand and join in when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing it will be. Raise up a child in the way that he should go and she should go. And when they eulogize their mother, they will not depart from that way. Gracious and eternal God, thou who art the author and the finisher of our faith, we face the unenviable task of coming to the end of this earthly runway. But we know that we have inherited wings that were not given by this world. And we have another house to which we can flee when this earthly body collapses. So now, O oh God, we give thanks for this day and for the message of life that has been given at a moment of death. Keep us and seal us. Build us up and protect us so that in the coming days as we move forward, we will remember the witness of this, your saint, but look toward the cross of Christ. We know that there will be a time when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, when benedictions shall be no more, for every day shall be Sabbath, and Sunday shall have no end. As we leave this place now, O oh God, we ask that you bless us and that you keep us. It is in Jesus' eternal and marvelous and matchless name that we do pray and offer these prayers and petitions. Let the body of Christ say amen, amen, and amen. like to thank everyone who has come here to support this beautiful family. This was an awesome service. Such an amazing tribute to his mother. God bless you. You are an incredible gentleman. Yes. I have several ladies to help me carry the flowers outside. Thank you, ladies. I need to see six men. Can I see the hands of six men to help us pallbearers? Gentlemen, would you please come to the center aisle? And then you can go right to the back. And that's where you will help us carry the casket. Everyone who is going to the cemetery, we're going to Washington Crossing, and those drivers who are going to the cemetery, may I see your hands, drivers who are going to the burial site? Okay, as you pass by me, I'm going to have an orange marker to give you. Put it under your rearview mirror, facing out the words funeral. Put your headlights and your blinkers on. Please stay as close as you can. Now, we do have a time limit. We have to be there by 1.30. 
we do have good time, but we don't want to tarry. So let us please graciously go to your cars as soon as possible, and we will be in order. God bless you. Thank you, everyone. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has set me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, with great mercies. Will I gather thee in overflowing wrath? Lasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. 